Hey everyone, uh, my name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. If you like this content, subscribe, hit the thumb up button. Uh, I've got a little bit different clip here, it's called Transitioning Onward. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump right in, uh, no, no, no BS here, let's just jump right in, Transitioning Onward. Uh, a little bit different, so we're looking at the world differently in this. And uh, I'm just gonna make some comments here that everything of true value uh, is in nature. It's basically your natural resources. That's where all value is derived from. Uh, companies manipulate natural resources into usable products. So a fact, just in my opinion and kind of a fact, is companies that are the most vertically integrated or transforms products with the most trade secrets are typically the highest valued uh, on stock exchanges. Just kind of a FYI. Uh, wisdom and computing power drives new developments in human progression of technology. And one thing I think everyone needs to keep in mind is that new exotic materials that we know less about have more potential for future developments uh, than more well-known materials. So things like platinum, uh, things like certain types of like graphene and, and all these different types of materials that are out there. Uh, the ones that are more exotic, the ones that have higher melting temps, uh, more corrosion resistance, they're gonna have more applications as we push the boundaries uh, of exotic designs, we're gonna need more exotic materials. Uh, world resources, just in general. So resources are used up and transformed into usable products. We will need to reclaim these minerals uh, to be used for other uses in the future. And think of it as recycling. Uh, and also keep in mind that we might be mining garbage uh, as an alternative to mining if mining becomes uh, if we have constraints around energy, uh, constraints around ore grades, whatever those constraints may be. Uh, and then we've got recycling up here. Many minerals are recycled today and will need to be recycled in the future. Uh, all resources never really leave us. You know, they simply change shape, use, purpose. Uh, they're used in, in products that are in garbages and obviously we need to repurpose those for something that we want to use in the future that, are gonna, that is going to provide value uh, to human society. And at, at some point, resources in, uh, in or on Earth uh, will, will get ever more difficult to get. We gotta keep that in mind. That leads us into energy. Uh, at some point, financial decisions will change. Uh, decisions will be based off of energy density and energy returns versus financial decisions. So it's based off of how much energy do we have to expend to get energy back. Uh, we've been awash in, in an abundance of energy. Uh, that's kind of what we've grown up with. That's what we. Uh, we know, and that's our paradigm right now, is its energy is pretty cheap and affordable. Uh, when energy becomes a lot more scarce, everything will be valued in terms of energy, uh, in my opinion. And when you look at precious metals, uh, we might be look, looking at those as a store of value or a store of energy because we had to use so much energy to get these, these uh, precious metals out of the ground. And these metals, they have a huge uh, value to society. In, in, in their uses, uh, and, and even their uses in, in currency. But there's a, there's a lot of stored value in those. And I think people overlook it because we're in an abundance of energy. When you're in an abundance of energy, you're not really thinking about it. When that energy becomes scarce, all of a sudden the valuation and the, the value to society is going to change of everything that's above ground. Uh, here's materials and minerals. So materials above ground will become infinitely more valuable as energy becomes more scarce. Uh, some minerals will provide far more value to human society than others. And I don't necessarily know what those minerals and materials are. Uh, how does an investor pivot between an abundance of energy to a scarcity of energy? Good question. And I don't know exactly when this is going to happen. Maybe it's five years from now. Maybe it's 20 years from now. I don't know the exact timing. Uh, but I, I'm pretty sure we're going to hit it at some point uh, in, in, in either our life or our kids' life. Uh, minerals in the hand are worth far more than minerals in the ground uh, when energy scarcity exists. Uh, or perhaps we figure out how to mine differently. Maybe there's some different way. And that the very low ore grade minerals are going to be worth far more than what we're valuing today. So that's two different kind of, of, of ideas. One is we hit energy scarcity and whatever we have above ground is gonna become extremely valuable. Or we figure out ways to mine differently, which is the opposite of the spectrum. And all the low grade stuff that these companies are valued at completely you know, low valuations might be valued far higher 
because the value of the minerals is where it's at because we sucked out all the costs of actually getting them. So I've got something called a paradigm slapping people in the face. So their, their paradigm is going to have to, it's going to just get slapped with the current paradigm versus a new paradigm. Right now, financial centers, uh, banks and whatnot uh, are, are valued very highly. If you look at all of the downtown areas, the biggest buildings are all banks and financial centers. Almost every downtown. It's a bank or, or some financial like fidelity or, or some brokerage or whatever it is. It's some, something financial. So banks, brokers, hedge funds, financial companies, you know, they're, they're all high, very highly valued today. Uh, what they kind of do, in my opinion, kind of is, is they figure out ways to be a middleman between value creators. They kind of just take their, they, they, they skim off a, a large portion off the top of everyone. And I don't, I don't see that necessary value that they're providing, but that's my opinion. I uh, take it for what it's worth. Um, companies and humans uh, who can figure out how to make the next steps into an energy scarce world will prosper. Uh, whoever that may be in whatever companies, and it's gonna be technology companies, energy efficiency companies, recycling, repurposing. Uh, if they can figure out a way to transport people better, they're obviously gonna make a ton of money. Investments into companies that are disruptors will prosper in this next paradigm uh, change along with, I think, natural resource companies. Uh, as technology becomes better, those who own the natural resources are going to prosper because they have the rights to those minerals. The technology will allow, will allow us to extract those minerals if they own the mineral rights. Uh, so look, going into this in terms of investments and materials and whatnot, platinum, gold, silver, palladium, rhodium, they're all extremely rare and they're very hard to get out of the earth. Uh, these are all vastly undervalued when looked at compared to energy abundance going to an, going to an energy scarce world. They're all extremely scarce. They're very difficult to get out of the ground. Uh, and I think right now with an energy, energy abundance, they're all undervalued quite substantially. Even financially, they're undervalued, a lot of them. Uh, uranium is another one. Uh, this material has unparalleled energy density. The energy density will allow humans to create many things in the future and can be a bridge fuel to another different future, whatever that may be. And right now we've got natural gas and oil. Natural gas obviously is getting ramped up in its uses uh, as we transition into a renewable world. Renewable energy is kind of an on, on off switch and that natural gas fills in the gap when renewables are not performing to the level that we need them to perform at. So that's our bridge fuel, natural gas. Uh, these are bridge fuels which will become extinct soon. This will propel us into a different future for humans uh, and, and different energy sources and materials. Another kind of materials is, you know, we've got base metals and I call them just stones. Um, cobalt, nickel, copper, manganese, etc. Base metals uh, will allow us to manipulate the world around us to do what we want to do with it. Transport, transportation, mining, buildings, bridges, dams, pipes, filters, cars, doesn't matter what it is. That's what really what builds us and allows us to be a, a, an advanced society. Uh, the transition from financial products being in favor, uh, I think we'll transition to those that are natural resource extractors uh, and new company disruptors in a new world for everyone. So it's gonna transition from the financial guys to the people who are the disruptors that can figure out how to prosper in a more energy scarce world. Uh, so the conclusion here is, how does your portfolio take into account energy scarcity? Uh, perhaps we should position for this. Uh, and are you positioned for this? Uh, how does your portfolio position for a world where mining technology drastically increases? That could be the opposite end of the spectrum. You know, perhaps low ore grade properties will be far more valuable than what we're valuing, valuing them today. Uh, do you have physical metals in your possession for, for a new world or for a new energy scarcity world? Those are probably going to be great bets. Uh, are you positioned to profit from new materials being used in products? You know, do you have exotic materials in, in your portfolio? Do you think they're going to be used more so in, in the future for whatever technology can, can come up with uh, to use them? I think silver and platinum are, are two that come to the top of my head. Uh, and do you have the most energy dense metal in your portfolio, which is uranium? So, you know, uh, going over all this, it, it's just looking at, at the world a little bit differently. We're all looking at it through, I'd say, a similar paradigm. If that paradigm switches, a lot of these assets are going to be valued differently. Uh, and what I'm trying to do is open up your paradigm a little bit and say, hey, if we look at this world a little bit differently than what we've currently been looking at it, from an energy abundance to more of an energy scarcity, 
what does that world look like and are you positioned to profit from that world? Uh, I, I've taken the look from both, both angles. I try to position myself, you know, energy abundance and energy scarcity at the same time. And wherever you can find materials that work in both worlds, I think those are the, the, the lowest risk approach, uh, if, especially if it's an asymmetric bet. So we've got a lot of those bets out there. Uh, I think we're positioned pretty well with the channel at least uh, to capture a lot of those investments and to capture an energy scarce and an energy abundance world. So if you like this clip, you know, subscribe. Uh, I, I'm releasing a lot of different types of clips similar to this and, and some are more, uh, I'll say classic or, or generic kind of uh, investment type stuff. So subscribe, comment, and hit the thumbs up button if you like this content. Thank you.